Hi everyone, I hope you had a great week. Are you ready for another Bible adventure? Well, I hope that you are. But before we begin, please pray with me. Dear God, thank you so much for loving us and always being there for us. Thank you for being a God who keeps his promises. And Lord, as we look into the new year, we pray that you'll continue to bestow your blessings upon each and every one of us in here, our friends and our families. We thank you in your son's Christ's name we pray, amen. I have a question for you guys today. What is the most annoying insect that you've ever encountered? What was it like? You know, there are some scary insects, right? Insects that could hurt you, like the bee or the wasp or, or, or hornets. And then there's some pretty insects like a, a butterfly. And there's some cute insects like a uh, roly-poly. And you know, there's also some cool looking insects like a beetle or, or a praying mantis. But what's the most annoying one? Well, if you're anything like me, I think that you can agree that the most annoying insect is the mosquito. Oh, I hate the mosquito, right? Every summer, hundreds upon hundreds of mosquitoes come and they, they bite you, they suck your blood and they make you itch. It's horrible, it's so annoying. And you know, I just wish that all the mosquitoes in the world would just disappear so we don't have to go through that itchy feeling during the summer. Think about the feelings that you get when you get bitten by a mosquito. You get upset, right? You get angry, like, why again? You get mad. You, you go through so much and you just wish that they would all just die and fall off the planet of the earth. Well, today, as we continue our story with Moses, we're gonna see another character who went through so many different difficult and possibly annoying things but he didn't respond the way that we would to getting bit over and over again by mosquitoes. But before we get into that, let's review once again. What is our big picture question? Our big picture question is, does God keep his promises? And the answer to this question is, yes, God always keeps his promises because he is faithful. Remember, the theme of this unit that we're going over right now is about God keeping His promises. And that is why we always go over the big picture question, just to remind ourselves what the overarching uh, question that, that's going to be addressed is each week. You know, when sin entered the world through Adam and Eve's disobedience, God promised a solution to the problem that came. God promised to bring a rescuer through the family of Abraham. And we learned last week that this savior, this solution to the problem of sin, was Jesus. We shared this rescue story last week because it was Christmas, but the week before that, we started a new adventure with a new character named Moses. Many years after Abraham and his son Isaac and his son Jacob, and even Jacob's son, Joseph and the other 11, Israel became slaves to the country of Egypt. And God raised up a man named Moses to help deliver his people, the Israelites, out of slavery to Egypt. God called Moses to bring the Israelites out of Egypt and deliver them to the promised land. Moses what ran away from Egypt because he killed an Egyptian and he was afraid. And while he was away, God called him through a burning bush. Well, do you think Moses was confident and happy that God was calling him to go back to the land he ran away from to confront the king of the land, Pharaoh? No, not really. But God promised once again to Moses and he kept his promise that God will be with him and teach him the things that he needs to say, and also that if he gets really scared, that he'll let his brother Aaron come along. Well, how do you think this all went down? Of course, God kept his promise to be with Moses. Today's Bible story is called 
God delivered his people. And let's see what happened. God's people, the Israelites, were slaves in Egypt, and God called Moses to rescue them. Moses and his brother Aaron went to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and told him, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says, Let my people go. But Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord? Why should I obey him? Israel may not go. So God sent ten plagues to punish the Egyptians. First, God turned the water in the Nile River into blood, but Pharaoh would not let the people go. God sent frogs into Egypt. Pharaoh said, Ask your God to take away the frogs, then I will let the people go. But when God removed the frogs, Pharaoh refused to let the people go. So God sent gnats that bit the people and animals. Then God sent flies, and he caused all the livestock to die. Still, Pharaoh did not let the people go. God sent boils that covered the people, but Pharaoh's heart was hard. Not even a terrible hailstorm changed Pharaoh's mind. Locusts ate up the plants, and then darkness covered the land for three days. But still, Pharaoh said no. God told Moses, I will bring one more plague. After that, Pharaoh will let my people go. Moses warned Pharaoh, Every firstborn son in Egypt will die, but the Israelites will be safe. Pharaoh ignored Moses. So God told the Israelite families to kill a lamb and put its blood on the doorposts of their houses. This would be a special mark that God would see and pass over. The Israelite families would be safe. At midnight, God struck every firstborn in the land of Egypt. There was a great cry because there wasn't a house without someone dead. Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron. Go, he said. The Israelites were ready, all of them. 600,000 men and their families left Egypt quickly. They took bread and their animals. The Egyptians gave them gold, silver, and clothing. God led his people out of Egypt. He was preparing a place for them in a land called Canaan. For 430 years, the Israelites had been slaves in Egypt. They were finally what an incredible story. You know, Pharaoh didn't listen to God when he was told to let the people go. In fact, he made the Israelites work even harder at the slave work that he was driving them to do. Because of this, the Israelites started to question Moses and Aaron. Were they really trying to help them? It seemed like all that Moses and Aaron was doing was making the lives of the Israelites even worse. To Moses, God's plan didn't seem to be working either. Imagine building up the courage to stand in front of a king of a different country to confront him and still just be rejected. But God was in control. He had heard the Israelites' cries. God had a plan to prove his power to Pharaoh and to keep his promise to the Israelites. God sent 10 plagues to get Pharaoh's attention and judge the Egyptians. Though all 10 of the plagues were really bad, and hurt and annoyed the people. Pharaoh didn't really care until the very last plague. Like I shared with the question I asked at the beginning of the sermon, what's an annoying insect, right? And how do we feel if we get bit by mosquitoes? We get upset and we get angry and we get annoyed. Well, Pharaoh went through nine plagues and it didn't even bother him. It seemed like he didn't care and he wasn't gonna change. His heart was hard, the Bible tells us. The Egyptian people, suffered terribly, but still Pharaoh would not let the Israelites go. The last plague, though, was the most terrible of all. In the night, the Lord struck down the firstborns of Egypt, from the firstborn son of Pharaoh all the way to the firstborn son of a, a homeless wanderer in Egypt, and even the firstborns of all the livestock. Yet God passed over the Israelites' houses that was marked with the blood of a lamb to signal to God that the Israelites were living in those houses. God passed over those houses. That very night, Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron and told them to get out of Egypt. Pharaoh let the Israelites go just as God has promised. You see, once again, God kept his promise just like 
our big picture question and answer, right? What was that again? The big picture question and the answer was, does God keep his promises? Yes, God always keeps his promises because he is faithful. Now, with every story, we look for the Christ connection, right? How does Jesus Christ connect back to the story of Moses and the Israelites being freed from Egypt and the rule of Pharaoh and the ten plagues? By his grace, God spared the Israelites from judgment by requiring the blood of a lamb. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. His death was the ultimate sacrifice and those who trust in Jesus are under his saving blood and will be passed over in the final judgment. God saved the Israelites from judgment through the blood of the Lamb. We are saved from judgment through the blood of Christ. Jesus spilled his blood on the cross and was a saving sacrifice that was lifted up. He was lifted up to save us and rescue us, just as how God promised. All who believe in Jesus will be saved by his blood. God keeps his promises. God kept his promise to the Israelites to free them out of Egypt. And God keeps his promise to us to free us from sin through Jesus Christ. God will also keep his promises in the future as well. The promise that we can join him in heaven someday in the far future. Remember, God always keeps his promises. Amen? Amen. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you so much for being a God who keeps his promises. You promised the Israelites so long ago that you will rescue them and from the hands of Pharaoh and the Egyptians, and you kept that promise. And you promised us that you'll save us from sin if we believe in Jesus Christ. And you sent your son Jesus to die and resurrect to rescue us from sin. And we thank you for that as well. Help us to always remember you are a God who keeps his promises, that you are not a God who does not change his mind, and you are a God who will love us forever as you have promised. We thank you and we love you. In your son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.